In this video, uh, I'm going to show you how to make a mock-up of a branded item with a logo and a theme line on it. Uh, you can find lots of, of pretty good mock-ups at uh, sites like Graphic Burger and, and Dribble, uh, Dribble with three Bs, but sometimes you can't find exactly what you want, and it's good to know how to make your own, so let's figure it out. Now, you could always just drop a logo and a theme line onto a, a photo of an object and call it good enough, like this. Here's our object, here's a copy of the logo and a new layer. You could call that good enough, but it doesn't look realistic. And that's because the perspective is off. This is a flat 2D logo placed on top of a three-dimensional object. It looks amateurish. We can do better. Okay, so here is the image we will start with. Just a basic little uh, round rubbish bin from Ikea that I propped up on some books so that this uh, beautiful institutional carpet wouldn't be uh, right next to it and make the uh, uh, magnetic uh, selection much easier. So you know how to do that. You'd simply click on your selection tool, use your magnetic lasso, and run around and you can get, if you've got really well-defined edges, you can get a pretty quick and generally good selection. If it had been next to that carpet like it was on the first picture I took, then you'd have some areas where the carpet and the trash bin might blend together. Okay, so there's the selection. Okay, so here's the image. I've pasted it into a, a new file with transparent background. Uh, the selection looks pretty good, but it looks like it's not real straight on the original photo. So let's, uh, let's rotate that a little bit. To do that, we go under Image, Image Rotation, Arbitrary, and let's try five degree, 0.5 degrees counterclockwise. Take a look with our guides here and see. That's fairly, that's a little better. That's straighter now. Okay, now let's resize the image to about the size that we think we'll want it. So we'll go under image, image size. Uh, if we're going to print it, let's put the resolution at 300 or 72 if you're just going to use it on the web. And let's make our height about, uh, about six inches high. And that'll make it about four by six. Next, what we want to do is make a smart object layer on top of this uh, on top of this trash bin, and what we want to do is that is make something that we can create this same kind of arc and curvature in, so that it, it looks like it's actually uh, a decal or painted on there. And so the first thing we want to do is probably look at our uh, logo that we're going to use, so that we can create an area that uh, that it'll, will fit in nicely. And we can see this Tuskies logo is is a fairly strong vertical, and we're going to make it even more strong by putting a theme line under there. So we want to create. A, a smart object area that will accommodate that. Okay, before we make our smart object, let's uh, let's finish prepping our logo so that it's it's completely ready to go in here. So, here's the logo we're going to use. We want to get rid of this white background. There's several ways to do this, but I'm going to make a new file. Um, put this into about two inches wide, four and a quarter inches tall, somewhere in there. Let's have it on transparent background. Now we go back to our Tusky logo, and using the magic wand selection tool, let's select this area of the white, hold down the shift key to add to the selection, select that. Let's leave the eye white though. Now let's select the inverse so that we get the uh, printed parts of the logo, and then copy, and then go to our new file and paste that in there. Okay, let's slide the logo up a little bit, and let's set a theme line in underneath it. And we'll go to our type tool, and this uh, logo type is in uh, Arial Rounded. Uh, Arial Rounded MT Bold Regular. And we'll click here, set our type. And it it's obviously a little too wide there, so let's bring this down, say, to about 11 points, and then let's uh, adjust the tracking. Bring that down to about minus 50, and that's pretty good. Then we can center that in there. 
And now let's merge these layers. And we're good. All right, now that we have our logo in good shape, let's go back and create our smart object layer. So we'll go back to this file. And first thing we want to do is create a new layer. So go down here to the new layer tab, click that. And now let's get the rectangular marquee tool. We're going to draw a rectangle kind of in the center here that's approximately the same dimensions as this logo we're going to use. It doesn't have to be perfect, but we just kind of want to get it about the right shape. So let's go with something about like that. Maybe I'll move it in a little bit more centered. And then let's go ahead and let's fill that with black. So edit, fill, contents, black. Okay. And then let's deselect that. And now let's come over to this layer and let's convert that to a smart object. And we can do that under the uh, layer menu and layer smart objects convert to smart object. Now that we've got our smart object layer made, this is where the fun begins. I know you I know you're thinking, Meads, this has been so fun already. I don't see how it could be even more fun, but trust me, it will. What we want to do now is take this black rectangle and transform it so that it follows the curve of the outlines of, of the rubbish bin. And there are several ways we could do this, but um, but they all have to do with the uh, with the transform uh, command. So we're going to go under the transform, and we can do it with with uh, skew or distort. Uh, warp is probably the best option for this particular one. Now under warp, you can see once we've uh, selected that, we've got uh, we've got a grid that comes up with toggles on it, and we have options under here. And so we could look at something like arc and that might get us pretty close. Um, that's pretty extreme, but if we grab this and bring it down, you know, we can get, we could get the, the top pretty good, but notice the bottom has this kind of curve when actually the, the curve goes the other direction on, on the piece itself. So we don't really want to do that one. So let's not apply that. What we're going to try is a custom warp. So we go to edit, transform, warp, and we just leave the, the option here at custom. And now we can, now all of these toggles are active. And so what we're going to do is we're just going to try to drag the pieces here to create a shape that looks like it's about the same as what we're working with. I might want to turn down our opacity too so that we can kind of see behind the, the rectangle there a little bit. Okay, so drag on these, move this one out a bit, and for this particular treatment, we don't want to get too um, we don't want to get too extreme really because there's not that much uh, curve and there's not that much angle to the uh, um, to the rubbish bin itself, and so we don't want to distort our logo more so than what um, than what the rubbish bin is. So that looks pretty good for the for the amount of curve up there. And then down here we want to draw these out a little bit as well. And sometimes you have to play around with this a few times till you get uh till you get a look that, that you think is is about right. But uh we'll we'll try this and see how it works. Okay, when you've got the uh, when you've got the transformation um, pretty well done, uh, go ahead and, and uh, uh, hit return, and that accepts the transformation. To get the logo in, now what we want to do is come over to our smart object layer and double click inside the, uh, the, the small picture of it. And what comes up is a new window and a new uh, active layer that is a copy of the original rectangle we, we drew without any of the transformations applied. So let's bring the logo in now. So we'll go back to our, um, back to our logo file. Let's select all to, cut to uh, select the content, then copy. Now let's go back to our uh, PSB layer, active layer, and paste the logo in. Okay, so now there it's, it's in there. 
the next thing we want to do uh, before we save this is we want to hide the, the black uh, rectangle because we don't want that to show up on our on our rubbish bin. So we uh, hide that, and when we're ready to place it, uh, we save the file. So save the file. Now if we click back on our rubbish bin, we can see that the logo has been placed. The opacity is, is still turned down, so let's bring that up. And yeah, now we see it. So you can see the angle here going from a little bit wider to a little bit narrower, and then a little bit of the, the curve here on the, um, on the type. So it looks like that's probably a pretty good transformation. One last thing we might want to try here. If we look at the picture again closely, we see that the that over here on the right side of the bin, it's a lot lighter than it is over on the on the left side. Only our logo is the is the same uh, light density all the way through. So maybe we should adjust this just a little bit, make the logo a little lighter here on the on the right side. To do that, we simply go back into our smart uh, smart object layer again, double click it to activate it. Then here's here's our our Tusky logo, and so now let's go to the um, Let's go to the Dodge tool right here and have a nice large brush and probably a pretty low exposure uh, setting. We don't need to make this uh, too dramatic here. We just want to soften the, the right edge of that logo just a bit. You can't really even see that it's doing much, but uh, it'll be look a little bit more natural on there once we, uh, once we go back into looking at with the perspective warp applied. So let's go ahead and save that when you're done. And look back at our file. And we can see, yeah, that's a little lighter uh, here on the right side. And using these techniques and then adapting the shape you draw and then transform, you can make a mock-up of a branded item for your integrated campaign using just about any object you can think of. Thanks for watching.